Hi, and welcome to the first of four episodes in my Essential Flame series. My name is Darren Mostyn, and in this episode, we're going to be looking at user and project settings. Flame is the hero suite from Autodesk and is arguably one of the most powerful in the industry for visual effects, editing, compositing, motion graphics, color correction, right through to delivery. Every time I've seen Flame being used or demoed, it's always looked like some sort of scene out of Tron on steroids. So in this short series, I want to just explain the basics of getting around Flame. So I've been playing on the software for a few weeks and really don't want to show you anything complex, but I want to give you a good grounding, allowing you to get as deep as you like later. So just before we do that, it's worth noting that you can actually download a 30-day free trial of Flame and uh, have a go at this yourself. So I own Online Creative, which is a boutique post facility in Brighton. We specialize in commercials and long-form television. And any Flame work that we've had has always been sent up to the uh, big guns in Soho. Flame is now available on a cost-effective license option. So smaller facilities like ours can actually invest in these major league tools without actually breaking the bank. So this is great for keeping the business in-house. So I've been playing on the software for a few weeks now. I've watched a ton of tutorials, there's plenty out there, and what I'm really trying to do with these four short tutorials is demystify Flame a little bit. I want to explain some of the things that I found a little bit tricky to grasp. You're certainly not going to be a Flame artist by the end of it, I can absolutely promise you that. But what I am going to do is just take some of the effort out of getting to know how Flame works. So when you first launch Flame, you'll arrive at this page here. The host computer is listed here, we've got our workspace that we're in, we've got our users here, and basically to build a new project, we just click on here. So if I press new, up comes this dialog box, so we can give the project a name. We can type a nickname here, this will put a whatever prefix you like to any render files that you have. The volume that we're going to be working on, but a flame will automatically look for the largest volume that you have on your system. Um, so I'm going to leave that set at the default here. And you can copy setups from other projects. I'm going to say new setup. The resolution can be set here. So we're working in 1920 by 1080. It's currently set to 8-bit. Let's change that to 10-bit processing. And progressive is good. Uh, this is looking at my broadcast monitor settings. So 1080... 25p, that's good. Frame rate set to 25 frames per second. So the color policy by default is set to legacy, and this allows me to set any color space I want for my media. However, you can change that, so you could work in an ACES color space. Um, if you're not working in RAW, you can do a simple linear workflow, and that will just be Rec. 709, um, but I'm gonna leave that set to legacy. So this is where you choose your default codec for rendering. You can change this later in the software. You can choose any codec you want to render. You can set proxy settings if you want to work in proxy. We're not gonna do that. And once you're happy, you just press create. If you need to change any of those settings, just press edit and modify project. So let's create a new user. We've currently got my user settings in here, but if we press new, we get this user profile. So we can create a profile based on keyboard shortcuts. So at the moment, the profile is set to flame. That means it's the flame default keyboard shortcuts and hotkeys. In here, there are several options. And you can have, if, you're, if you come from a smoke background, you could use the Smoke Classic, which is the pre-2013 version, or the later Smoke, which has got the Final Cut Pro 7 keyboard shortcuts. So if we click on here, what we can actually do is create a generic user called FCP7. So this user will take on the keyboard shortcuts and preferences that were from Smoke. If I make any modifications to that, then they will be updated to this user. If we set the new preferences dialog box to say copy from, we could copy my user settings into this generic one. I'm gonna leave it set to new preferences and we just say create. So that's now here and we can choose any user we like from the pull down menu. You can easily switch users and projects inside Flame, but when you're creating projects and users, you have to be in this page here. Okay, so once you're happy, just press Start, and you'll arrive here in the Flame interface itself. Just to start with, down the bottom right corner, there's a Flame icon, and this gives you access to various preferences and project settings and that sort of thing. But the interface itself is split into three main areas. This large area here is the Viewer panel, down here, you have the editing panel, which contains the tools that you're going to need to work with. And on this side, you've got the media panel. Down at the bottom, we have five main areas that we work in. So by default, we're in the tools area. So let's take a look at the first one, which is media hub. So the media hub actually allows us to import clips into Flame. So this is looking at our volumes and directories. If we click in here. 
Now, if this is a directory you're going to use quite a bit, you can actually bookmark it. So the Media Hub is a really easy way of getting clips into Flame. The clips usually sit in a reel, so by default we have one, two, three, four reels, and I'm going to import this clip into reel one. So let's choose a clip to bring in, and click import. And you see that link straight away, so that's now in reel one, sat there quite happily, and that's just a link. It's not a copy, it's just a straight link. Let's click on reel two. And this time I'm going to multiple select some clips to import. Now on a Mac you'd use command to multiple select clips, but on Flame the command and the control keys are the other way around. So you need to press control and click on the clip you want to import. Let's just bring in those. So it says six of 47 items are selected. So let's import and you see those six items have gone into reel two and they're now linked. If we now go back to our tools page, you can see quite clearly here that we've got one, two, three, four, five, six clips on reel two. And we've got one clip set on reel one here. Okay, and we can move these around. So I can take this one and move it up to reel one. I'm literally just dragging. And you can move clips between different reels just using the media panel. And it's really just a way of organizing your clips. So in here you'd have your clips, your 3D motion graphics, your composites. You just organize the reels in whatever way works for you. And then we could easily go back to the Media Hub. So let's select Reel 3, and let's bring in this shot here. Back to the Tools page, there's our new clip on Reel 3, so you can see how these interact really easily. So I can take one of these shots now and double click it to play. Press the Enter key to play. You can also use the traditional JKL keyboard shortcuts for playing back your clip. Press Escape to go back to the Desktop Reels. Instead of double clicking a clip to open the player, you can change the viewer panel mode by clicking on its main menu down here. To go back to my player, I could just press here, and we're back again. And there's quite a few different modes in here, and we're going to look at some of these in the rest of the tutorials. So let's go back to our desktop reels, and I'll quickly talk you through some of these other pages. So down here we've got conform, so this is where you're bringing in XMLs and AFs from other systems. Timeline next to that is where we work on those sequences once they're imported. So you can do all your trimming and stuff in here. And we can actually create our own sequences in here. Batch is the node-based compositor. So you've got all the tools in here that you're going to need to build up your composites. And this really is where Flame starts to really come into its own. So let's save what we've done so far. We've been working in this workspace and in a desktop here. If I right-hand click on that desktop, we can rename it. So I'm going to put it desktop 1. And we're going to save that to a library. Desktops have to be saved to libraries. And the desktop is literally this moment in time. So I'm going to press Save down here. We've got Desktop01, and that's going to go to the default library. And we'll press Save. In the next episode, we're going to take a look at the media panel, and I'm going to explain the difference between libraries, desktops, reels, batch reels, and sequences. So thanks for listening.